Hey guys, back again with another video. This episode, we're going to be learning how to read input from the console. So when I say reading inf input from the console, what do I mean? Well, if you don't know what the console is, you're either an idiot or you just don't know. But if you run uh, any program here, of course, any of your Java programs, um, let it load, hold on. Okay, so this right here, that prints out information, usually when you're doing like S out, you know, system to out print line, that's outputting stuff to the console, okay? And if you didn't know, you can actually type in the console, but of course we can't do it yet because we haven't enabled that function, right? And so yeah, we can type in the console and it's very useful for providing your application with very useful information like uh, for example you could um, output the message how old are you right and then you could let the user type in how old they are right and you can use that information to uh, you can maybe feed it to an if statement or something and then use that information to uh, do something to your program depending on how old they are you know what I mean hopefully you know what I mean so uh, yeah so it's a very simple concept don't worry it's just like typing in um, you know Windows PowerShell you know just stuff like that right that this is literally a console okay so we're going to be able to type information in here and then feed it into our program, which is going to be super magical, okay? It's awesome. So how do we do that, right? Well, usually you would use a byte stream when you're dealing with console input in Java. I mean, that's the old way, apparently. But the new way is going to be using a character stream because um, a character stream is basically just like every character on your keyboard, basically, you know, the ASCII table or the Unicode table, that's basically what's associated with the character stream, right? It's all those different letters and keys and stuff like that. And of course, each one has a code associated with it, um, like bytes, you know, each... Uh, so for example, the letter A has, the, has a certain number associated with it, okay? And we'll get to that in a moment, don't worry. I'll show you what I mean by that. But, um, so basically, we're going to be able to hook, our, hook up our keyboard input to our console and then have that hooked up to what's called a buffered reader, which translates the um, the the byte code to uh, actual characters. It's it's all very magical, and I don't know the exact specifics behind it. But once you see what I'm doing, you'll you'll get a firm understanding of what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, so hopefully, um, so like I said, we're going to be using a class called buffered reader, and buffered reader is it's it creates a buffered input stream. So let's go ahead and create our buffered reader class. Okay. So buffered reader or oh, not buffered reader class we're going to be making a buffered reader object of the class buffered reader of course yeah so buffered reader and then we'll call it br is equal to new buffered reader okay and then um it's go it's going to want a parameter let's see if we can get the thing to tell us what parameter we need okay so we need a, a parameter of an object of the type reader okay that's interesting okay so so what can we what can we put in there, right? Um, there's different things we can put in there, of course. So there's so many different uh, classes and objects or whatever you want to call it associated with um, input and output inside of Java, and I'm not going to get into all of them because even that hurts my brain. So um, the one we're going to use is called input stream. So oh, excuse me, input stream reader. Okay, so input stream reader will actually be able to work in here even though it's not of the same object. So remember, let's see if we can get it to come up again. Um, whatever, it doesn't matter. So it wanted a parameter of the type reader, right? But this isn't, it doesn't say reader, this is input stream reader. Well, this is um, likely a superclass or subclass, I can't remember which one, of the type reader. So this is technically um, still a reader class, okay? It's, it's probably a subclass, don't worry. So anyway, the point is that we can use this because it's of the type reader, basically, okay? Um, so. Uh, we got imported, of course. Um, there we go. Uh, wait. Import class. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, sorry. So we're going to call it, um, we can call it IR. doesn't matter. IR is equal to new input stream reader. Okay. And inside of input stream reader, we're going to need something else. So let's see if we can get the parameter to show up. I don't know why it's doing that, but it doesn't show the parameters. So um, we have we have a lot of choices. We can either have you know these two, whereas you know there's two parameters, but we're going to have this only one parameter, right? And this is going to be a parameter of the type input stream, okay? So basically, this is going to be your your direct input from the console or your keyboard, whatever you want it. Well, it doesn't matter, okay? This is going to be your direct input, and this is basically going to be your bytes, okay? 
And so your bytes is going to be like numbers, like, you know, numbers and stuff like that, right? So we're going to be using system.in, okay? And of course, if you remember system.out, that's for outputting stuff to the console, right? But of course, system.in is, you know, the opposite. You're inputting stuff to the console, okay? So that's very cool. So basically what this is doing is it's taking stuff from the, um, from the console, translating it to bytes, or it might already be in bytes. But then the important part is that this goes inside of here, which is actually going to convert this to character stream. It's going to convert it to a character stream. I typed the wrong thing. Type IR because that's the object, of course. So yeah, we put the object here as a parameter, and now these this little byte stream is now converted to a character stream. Okay, so hopefully that's in your mind now it's not super important to understand what's happening but that's how you do it okay so now with BR we can do things like read characters read lines and all that magical stuff but what we're gonna do now is just use the read um, function or method whatever um, so basically what this will enable us to do this little read method here this is um, it allows you to read one character from your from your console okay so um, yeah but um, we can't exactly use it yet because we have an unhandled exception. We have um, an IO exception. So let's go ahead and handle that. So we'll do try and then catch, of course. Uh, IO exception. There it is. Uh, we'll just call it, what do we usually call it? I forgot. Um, I don't remember. Um, I don't know. I'll just call it A, whatever. Or E. It was E, right? I think that's what we usually call our, I usually call my exceptions. I don't remember. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Um, cause I've been so busy, busy with school and stuff, you know? So, um, so that should work. Oh, this goes here. My mistake. Okay. So then we print out the exception if we have to, if it ever is called. Um, so yeah, so we're catching the exception now. So now this will work. So result is ignored. Okay. That's, that's just saying that because basically we're reading a character from our console, right? But we can't just read it. It's not going to do anything. The point of reading it is to be able to store it, right? So this is not actually going to do anything, right? So what we want to do is store this into a variable, right? So let's try that, okay? So we'll do um, int, um, I guess, uh, uh, input. I guess we can call it input for now until we figure out a better name for it. Is equal to br.read, okay? So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, so it's blank here, but if we click here, we can type now. So now we have an option to type. It's really cool. So let's type um, that and we'll press enter. Okay. So when we press enter, it's going to start running this part. Okay. So basically it creates the buffer reader, I guess. And then it lets you, it's going to wait for you to, to, to type your console message. And then when you press enter, it's going to run the next line of code, I guess. Okay. So that's how that works. So press enter and then nothing happens. Okay. Why does nothing happen? Well, actually something did happen behind the scenes. It read, um, you know, one character, which would be this one. It reads the first one in the line, of course, because you're gonna they're gonna do it one by one. So br, so if we had br read, you know, multiple times in a row, it would just do one character after another. Okay, but yeah. So behind the scenes, it's just storing um, the first character into the variable input, right? But we're not actually outputting anything, so we're not actually doing anything really uh, significant. So let's try outputting the character back into the the console. Okay, so we'll say um, this is the character we stole um, and then we could you know I'll put it like that so input and wait a second we don't have access to input why is that well if you know a little bit about scope um, this is within you know a brackets or whatever you call it I don't know what to call these freaking things are they curly brackets braces I don't freaking know okay but yeah um, so we have to put this inside of here you know to maintain the scope okay so if you don't want to do all that if that's too much work for you all got all you got to do is do uh, initialize input outside of the, uh, the the curly brackets whatever they're called okay so then we can get rid of this because you don't know you don't want to initialize it twice so now then you can access it um, out here okay so this error should go away uh, should go away no hmm maybe I'm wrong I guess um, we do have to use it in here for some reason because, um, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, I mean, I do know, but it's hard to explain. Basically, um, it's taking the character, storing it in here, right? But it doesn't relay that information to outside. I don't know how to, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, okay? We can still do our program perfectly fine, okay? So we can read the input, read the first letter, okay? And then store it into input and then output input, okay? So let's try that. Let's run the program. 
Then we're going to type something in here. Uh, Aunt Cody is cool, right? And it says, this is the character we stole, exclamation mark, 107. What in tarnation is 107? Well, if you remember what I told you, um, it's actually storing it as ASCII, ASCII numbers, right? ASCII numbers and that, all that fun stuff, right? So if you remember correctly, every key on your keyboard has a number associated with it because, you know, it's a, it's a computer, right? It deals with, it does with numbers, right? That's how it works, right? So this is basically... Um, a number, right? I mean, it is a number, right? So if we pull up an ASCII table here, give me one second, I'll do that. ASCII table, we can get information of which 107 is, so we can find out which letter 107 is. So if I'll have it right here, okay, so let's find 107, so let's look for it. So we're using, de we're using decimal numbers, right? Which is basically, you know, the regular number system that we use, okay? Don't worry about these other rows here, other three rows, just worry about decimal and then the character, which is obviously going to be, you know, the key, right? So decimal, let's figure out 107. 107 is equal to K. Okay, that's good because we actually typed K. Awesome, right? So now we understand why it prints out 107, but why or how can we convert it back to a letter, you know? Because we're, we're humans. We want to deal with letters, not numbers. We're not a computer, you know? So how can we do that? Well, we can do it by casting, of course. So we can cast a... Um, a number an ASCII number into a character if you didn't know that so let's try that out let's try that so we'll cast this well this is gonna be a number of course so we're gonna cast it into a char so we'll do char right in front let's see if that works let's output that all right we have to input <laughs> Cody and it says this is the character still in 107 it still doesn't work I don't know why well, I do know why, because I'm a super genius, okay? So let me show you my super geniusness, okay? So we casted it to char, but the variable itself is actually still an int. So you can't store char into an int. That doesn't make any sense. So you have to change this to a char also, okay? You know, that's a simple mistake, of course, but it's fine. Okie dokie. So we'll, we'll type something different this time. We'll type tree. So this is the character we stole, T. Okay, cool. So it worked, right? We can actually print letters now. Awesome. And before we move on, let's put a space here because it's like all connected. Connected and I don't really like that. So, um, yeah, so that's awesome, right? So let's run it one more time just to test it out. Um, Bob is my name. B. Okay, cool. So it works. We can do uppercase. Um, we can actually do numbers, like actual numbers. It won't, like, mess it up. So let's try that because, you know, it's magical. All right, so numbers, let's see here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, this is the character we stole, one, awesome. And of course, we could also do like exclamation point, number sign, dollar sign. We can do every single key pretty much. Uh, anything that's on the ASCII table, right? And it can probably even do other keyboards. Like if you, um, I don't know much about um, like Chinese keyboards or whatever, but if you live in like Japan or China, I'm sure you have a keyboard with different letters according to that language, of course. So um, I believe it should still work actually because it's also using Unicode, I believe, not just the ASCII table, because the ASCII table is more for like American and North American, you know, English, you know, English speaking keyboards. But if you use Unicode, you can use pretty much every letter and ever in existence. It's all very magical, and uh, yeah, you can do some more research if you want to. But anyway. So yeah, I mean, if you want to test it out, get it, bring out your Chinese keyboard or whatever and try seeing if it works, you know. Like try typing in here like a Chinese symbol or something and see if it works. Like ni hao, ni hao ma wo hen hao. Okay, that was bad. Okay, so next off we have something else. Let's try, um, you know, making this like cooler, right? So let's try that. So let's try um, being able to type a whole bunch of characters, right? Like we can type, you know, like full words, right? But it's only going to print one letter at a time. So let's try getting the program to repeat all the letters that we typed out to us, like by using a loop. That's how we'll do it, okay? So let's go ahead and try that, right? So we're going to be using a do while loop because that's the most effective way to do this from what I've seen. And so we just we'll just get rid of this for now. Um, and yeah, so we'll do do, and then C, or we'll do input because that's what we called it. Uh, input is equal to char. We're going to cast it again. Um, and then br dot read. Okay, so it's going to read a single character from the line, of course. So it's going to read a single character and store into input while casting while. Um, oh, wrong thing. So while c or sorry, input is not equal to q. 
And what does that mean exactly? Well, we're, uh, but you can use any letter here, by the way. It can be X, it can be anything. We'll use X, okay? So basically what this is going to do, it's going to read every letter from the input that you provided. And it's going to print it out. Well, actually, we didn't set it to print it out yet, but it's going to do that um, right here. <laughs> it's going to print out input. So it's going to read um, a character, print it out, read a character, print it out, read a character, print it out forever, pretty much, you know, from the input that you provided until it reaches the character X. So if you typed X and it gets to X, it'll stop it because it says while input is not equal to X, this will run, okay? So when it gets to X, it will stop it, okay? Pretty simple, pretty simple. So let's try running this and see what happens, okay? So we'll type a whole input here. We'll say um, Cody is the coolest person on earth. Of course he is. Whoa, okay. So let's see what we got here. Cody space is the perf I mean coolest perf uh, person on earth. Awesome, it worked. And even it even does spaces, right? Because of course if we look on the ASCII table, um, there are spaces. Um, I don't know which one it is though. La la la. Oh, space, uh, 32. Okay, so 32 is for space. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so yeah, we can do that now. That's very interesting. That's a cool little program we can do. But this is kind of simple, okay, don't don't you see? Like we're only able to read one character at a time, so it's kind of simple. So next episode we're gonna be learning how to read actual like full lines of text, you know, full strings, full words, okay? And that's gonna be really cool. And we're gonna make a couple of cool programs from that. So if you like this episode, leave a like. If you wanna see more, subscribe. And uh, yeah, so also make sure you check in the description. I'll leave a link showing all the code from today's episode. It's all gonna be here. And um, so yeah. Um, do that, store it as a bookmark, use it as a reference for later on because I know it's definitely easy to forget Java script, I mean Java code because I sometimes I I stop coding for a little bit and then I come back and I'm like what the heck? What is Java, you know? So sometimes you need a little bit of a reference. So make sure you go do that. And so yeah, if you leave leave a like, I'll be very happy to do that and okay, bye.